Right, so Joe Polina has been speaking about Ruben Amorim, who of course he worked with at Sporting Lisbon. Um, and he said, Ruben has a lot of quality, one of the best in Portugal. Polina said to Portuguese outlet Ojogo, he's done an excellent job. He's got in-depth knowledge and has a close relationship with his players. The way he's growing, he won't be in Portugal for much longer. He added, uh, is he capable of taking over at Liverpool? Yes, of course. The pressure is different. When you coach Liverpool, you have pressure from the fans, the club, the whole world. I think it will be a matter of time. Now, I think he meant it'll be a matter of time before he coaches in the Premier League, but maybe he meant he thinks it'll be a matter of time before he's coaching Liverpool. This video is sponsored by Surfshark, the best VPN on the market. Surfshark is an app or browser extension that allows you to change your location to access websites in other countries and keep you safe and secure from hackers. Using Surfshark, we here in Ireland can access other countries' Netflix libraries or other streaming platforms like The Zone in Spain for all those important Premier League games. Surfshark keeps you safe and private by protecting everything you do online. Everything. When your device connects to the internet, all that information is, in a way, blurred out. Surfshark is particularly useful for keeping you safe from being hacked if you use public Wi-Fi. Let's say you're in a cafe, you're a college, you're out and about, they've got you covered. Surfshark allows you to use one subscription on unlimited devices, meaning you can share your account with friends or family or that neighbour who's a little bit cheap. On top of all of this, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can also upgrade to Surfshark 1, which includes the VPN, an alert system for breaches related to your data, such as emails and credit cards, and an antivirus software for your desktop. Our sign-up offer gives you Surfshark VPN for a little over €2 Euro a month and you'll get an additional three months free. Simply scan the QR code on screen right now or use the link in the description and enter the code Anfield Agenda at checkout. I want to know how you guys feel about the possibility of Ruben Amorim because I know a lot of you have concerns similar to concerns about Alonso, um, about... Uh, his caliber you know how long he's been at Sporting Lisbon how is he ready to step up to a club like Liverpool and of course that's before we discuss the compensation that would be due uh, compensation ranges somewhere between 25 million and 17 million depending on uh, the date of his clause I think I think there's something in his bio clause that works backwards that gets a bit less uh, expensive the more his contract runs down but I want to know how you're feeling about it. I've spent a lot of time researching Ruben Amram over the last few weeks. Obviously, some of them for video, some of them just out of interest myself. And I've got to say, everything that I've read fills me full of confidence that he would be, he is going to be, whether it be at Liverpool or somewhere else, a top, top coach. The, the things that keep jumping off the page when you're reading up on him is relationship with his players, ability to motivate tactical acumen and um, somebody who just is hungry to learn and like Alonso almost obsessed with football so I really like the idea of Ruben Amram but I can't bury my head in the sand and say it isn't going to be uh, it's going to be it's going to be a gamble it is if Ruben Amram becomes Liverpool coach it's going to be a gamble but then again so is anybody that comes in after Jurgen Klopp oh wow 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 Wow. Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking news. Liverpool latest. Xabi Alonso now unlikely to feature on the final shortlist to replace Jurgen Klopp. Let me say that again. Xabi Alonso now unlikely to feature on the final shortlist to replace Jurgen Klopp. Now, he hasn't said why. And that much, I think we need to find out. Can I be honest? This doesn't surprise me as much as I think it may surprise others. One thing you may have noticed me hinting at over the last few days is Ruben Amorim, Ruben Amorim, Ruben Amorim. Because a lot of the stuff that I'm hearing behind the scenes is about Michael Edwards and Liverpool's admiration for Ruben Amorim. So... It's a disappointment to see Paul Joyce post that. And again, Paul Joyce is a journalist I have the utmost respect for. And if he posts that, I believe he's very well informed to post that. But it is a shock, right? Interesting. Do you reckon that that's because he's going to stay at Leverkusen or because 
we don't feel he's the right fit. Now, I'm honestly, I'm honestly a bit more relaxed about this than some of you may be, because as I said, I've spent a lot of time looking into Ruben Amram because I've been, I haven't been told Alonso's ruled out. I'm not going to say I have. I haven't. I've never been told Alonso's ruled out. Um, I believe Paul Joyce, though, so if Paul Joyce says it, I've no reason to doubt him. But I have been given a lot of indication that Ruben Amram is... I'll I tell you what, I'll tell you, full disclosure, I've been very close to making a video to say he's the number one choice. But I held off because common sense to me in my own head dictated that Shirley Jabi Alonso would be the number one choice. But I honestly feel like Ruben Amram's name, along with Julian Nagelsmann, could be high contenders there. But it is still massive news nonetheless. Uh, big wig reckons staying at Bayern or Bayer Leverkusen excuse me that's kind of the vibe coming out of Bayern Munich as well I think they start to think as well now that maybe Alonso's hanging off another year maybe he fancies taking over that Real Madrid job if Carlo Ancelotti departs in a year's time I mean I'm going to be honest and say I, I could understand that you know I, I would love him at Liverpool of course I would but if he wants to have one more year at Leverkusen and let's say I don't know, Florentino Perez gave him the old nudge to say, look, Carlo's departing in a year. You carry on doing what you're doing. Get a taste of Champions League football with Leverkusen and you can come to the Santiago Bernabeu as Real Madrid manager. I mean, look, it'd be a difficult one to say no to when you look at the quality of youth and attacking players they're bringing in there. You know, Endrick, Vinny Jr., Rodrigo, Jude Bellingham. I could understand that. If, if that's the case. But I guess it gives us more of a reason to discuss Ruben Amaram tonight then, right? So look, this is definitely a shock um, to hear Paul Joy say that he's unlikely. Now, he doesn't say definitively that he's not going to be on the list. But I think trying to read between the lines here, it feels like Alonso's kind of briefing that he's going to stay put for another season. And I've always said to you, if that's his decision... I can understand that. I truly can understand that. Obviously, I'd be disappointed if he didn't feel like the jump to Liverpool was a good move for him. But I understand if he feels he's, he's in the middle of a project there and perhaps wants to see the project through a little bit further, take Leverkusen into the Champions League next year. And I, I can understand that and I can appreciate that. Certainly a lot more than I could have understood him running to take the Bayern job. That would have felt uh, That would have felt wrong. That just would have felt like a poor choice to me. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be disappointed. And with that disappointment comes a lot of frustration. And you guys need to vent somewhat in the chat. I understand that. All I would ask is, don't give in. Don't don't let this be a thing that you think, oh, that's it. We're, we're in trouble. It isn't. We'll sort it. And I guess it gives us more of a conversation topic now to talk about Ruben Amorim. Because... I think Ruben Amram will probably propel to the top of this list now, um, at least off what I've re what I'm reading and seeing. After Ruben Amram, I'm probably I'm probably Nagelsmann, but with reservations. I'm not a hundred percent convinced on Nagelsmann yet. I know that the uh, German Football Federation want to discuss extending with Nagelsmann, but I also feel like they probably have one eye on Jurgen Klopp and hope Jurgen Klopp will lead them into the next World Cup. So for me, I think. If it isn't Amaram or Nagelsmann, I'm kind of drawing a blank after that. Like, De Zerbi's a good coach, but there are pros and cons to De Zerbi and De Zerbi's style of football. When it works, when Brighton are free-flowing, it's incredible. It's beautiful to watch, and they carve open teams. But there are also times when, like this season, it goes wrong, it, it goes wrong quickly. And I don't know, De Zerbi for me has the credentials as a coach to come in and manage Liverpool, but not so much the persona, if that makes sense. He just doesn't strike me as a Liverpool manager. And that's just my own viewpoint on it. Maybe I'm wrong. I just don't know if he'd have that connection. Because the Liverpool manager's job is it's a little bit different to some others. You do kind of have to... You have to resonate with the fan base. And obviously Jürgen done that in spades. Rafa, incredible, did it as well. So for me, I'm stuck after those two. Uh, Craig, I read an article earlier saying Sunday could be an audition for the Liverpool job. Yeah, I've seen that same article. I read that myself yesterday. Um, or a similar article anyway yesterday. And maybe it is. Maybe it is an audition, but I want him to fail the audition. Mainly because, of course, I want Liverpool to win the game. So, yeah, I hope it goes poorly from this weekend uh, for obvious reasons. 
Craig, Fabrizio tweeted that Amram is the main name on the list. Well, like I said, when the information about Joyce came out, or from Joyce, that's kind of the vibe I've been getting behind the scenes as well on Ruben Amram. That's why I went into such detail researching Ruben Amram for that little video. And I've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out the situation at Ruben Amram. So I'm not surprised if, if people are starting to think like he's the top name on the list because he's very, 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 very highly regarded by Michael Edwards. And even before the Edwards and Richard Hughes thing was announced, there was some chatter that Amram has scored really highly on the, the list of criteria that... Liverpool are going to be looking for. So, again, it's no surprise. It's a surprise that Alonso isn't going to be that guy. But after that, I'm not at all surprised to hear Amram's name near the top of that list. Um, Let's not give up on Jabby yet, said Casper's photography. Honestly, dude, if Joyce and Fabrizio and many others are going with this, I think that's pretty a pretty strong indication that it's unlikely. So, I feel like... I feel like maybe we'll see Alonso stay at Leverkusen, but, you know, it's disappointing. I can't lie. You know, we all want to jabby Alonso, but I guess at this point we have to trust the process. As as hard as that is to say and think of, we do. We have to trust that Michael Edwards, the FSG, as much as I don't like trusting FSG for anything, I do trust Michael Edwards um, and him and Richard Hughes and our analysts will sit down and find the right guy and... It looks like that guy could be Ruben Amaram. Interestingly about Ruben Amaram is his Sporting Lisbon team and teams he coached before that uh, are very proficient in using a low block defensively. So one of the things I thought of when I read that about Ruben Amaram and his team selections are, well, I hope he can teach us to break down a low block. I hope he can reverse engineer that low block for us because that's obviously been a problem that we've had. But it is unsurprising to me that we're looking at a coach there that utilizes a 3-4-3 system again isn't there any old head out there to steer the ship a young manager could be destructive to get Carlo from Madrid I feel like you're 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 panicking a bit Benjamin I don't want a young head I want a manager with big balls I want a manager that's gonna go yeah I'm 38 or 39 but I don't care give me the job I'm ready Ruben Amaram has never been backwards about coming forwards and he backs himself um so yeah and look Remember, there was an article written or a post put out a while ago from one of the journalists that said one of the requirements for the next Liverpool manager will be that. Big balls. Belief. Nobody who's wavering. Nobody who's concerned. You've got to have full faith in your ability and what you're doing. You've got to will yourself to succeed. And I think we just have to understand that the search is underway and we've got to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm not saying it's going to be a success. I'm not saying we're guaranteed to win trophies. But what I'm saying is, I think we've got the best people in the best positions to try and leave no stone uncovered in the search for the next manager. 